Hey, the Lord bless you guys. Evangelist Rob here of Rob Woods Ministries and just want to really give some input since many of the ministers are going public of what happened with Brother Rabbi Zacharias. Uh, he's really not a skinny jeans, fog machines preacher. He's more of a straight lace type of dude that's really more into apologetics. It seemed he carried himself with great dignity in the pulpit. His ministry, it seemed, was untainted for decades. But, you know, my thoughts on this, guys, you know, I sat under a ministry about 30 years ago in my infancy as a new believer. And the church grew very fast, over a thousand members very quickly. And I'm being transparent, I'm being candid, I'm being vulnerable. And the person that was the pastor of the church will never see this video. I would never want to hurt him, nor will I mention his name. Or Listen, I've never come on YouTube nine years. I was doing it nine years ago. I came off for four or five years. I just went back on six months ago heavy. Never mentioned one preacher's name pastor's name that fell from grace i more i more try and tell you the real thing when you see the real thing the jesus the christ when the counterfeit comes or the error the deception then you'll know the difference i don't come on here and name names of a pastor preacher fell into adultery sexual morale it's just not how i try and build my channel I try and build it from making disciples. Now, there are people that like this. There's something in the heart of man when someone falls from grace that people are drawn to that. Maybe it makes them feel better because they're not living right themselves for the Lord. Maybe something's in a people that are saying, oh, they fell. I told you. Listen, I never named ever any names, but let me get back. The set man from this camp or this church fell from grace in a major way. And you can use your imagine, imagination in many arenas, many ways. Now we know it's always the three G's the girl, for the guys. It's the girl's goal, the glory. Immorality, sexual morality could be adultery. If you're single, it is immorality. If you're married, it is adultery. Uh, the gold, money, fame, fortune, the gut pride, etc., etc. So nothing's new under the sun. Now, when this happened, I was devastated as a young baby Christian for about two or three years. And it confused me greatly how I could see someone in the pulpit carry themselves in the anointing and then found out, obviously, what their life was like out of the pulpit. Now, that wasn't the totality that encompassed this specific person. When you're on fire for Jesus, you're on fire, but there could come times if someone has a propensity or a weakness, they could fall into temptation. Now, let me just give you some keys now. The Bible says, take heed lest we fall. Take heed lest you fall. When Saul fell from grace, David said, don't shout it from the rooftop. So why is Rob doing this to this brother rabbi or rabbi? Because he's passed on. He's dead. The man's already gone. I never would ever probably would have done this if he was still alive. It was his own ministry and his own family, I would believe, that was involved with this investigation. Now, there's a difference between falling at this sin and then living in perpetual sin. There's a difference between falling, dusting yourself off, getting out, and then living in it, which can set up for patterns of iniquity and strongholds. And I've been coming on here imploring people Who's praying for their leaders, their pastors, these people that are very visible in the body of Christ? Because the Bible is clear. If the devil can smite the shepherd, he can scatter the sheep. So the devil wants to take out the set man, set women, people that are visible, spokesperson for the gospel, and embarrass them 
what could be error, could be immorality, could be temptation of major finances or just getting crazy with the stuff, the cars, the houses, yeah. But who's praying doctrinal, theological, you know, error from the word leading the leading people astray if they've been left astray, but who's lifting up the arms of these people, the Moses, Aaron and her lifted up the arms. Now, David, when he fell, because a lot of people use this, well, David was a man that did this, this, and this, and this. When David got caught, the prophet came to him and said, hey, David, I'm going to, you know, we, I'm going to give you the threshing floor for free. The threshing floor is the place of brokenness. It's the place where this, there's a separation from the wheat, from the chaff, the oxen stomp the, in the threshing floor threshes. David says, I want the threshing floor, not for free, but I want to buy it for the full price. The threshing floor is the place of brokenness. David repented and wanted to own his own failure and says, God, I'm the man. Please don't hurt them. Let your let your judgment and wrath be poured out on me. I want to get to the threshing floor. So just some thoughts on this brother that fell. You know, it's sad, like, seemed like he had a powerful ministry and was very innocent and very untainted. And it goes on that after his life, and I don't know the totality of it. Some are saying there's pictures of bones or a pitch on the floor of women. And there would certainly be a difference to me as if he's actually involved in adultery and sleeping with different women, obviously, consistently, as opposed to just looking at pitch, which is both sin. We know sin is sin, but there would certainly be a difference. And let me leave you with this. The Bible tells Saul, the prophet told Saul, when you were little in your own eyes. When Saul was little in his own eyes, and then all of a sudden he became the big shot, the BMOC, the big man on campus. If we're going to be in the ministry or anybody desires, you're going to be doubly judged. You're going to be judged double. You're going to be critiqued by the Lord himself. Make sure your life by the grace of God is hidden in Christ Jesus, the greatest inoculation away to keep yourself from sin is being in the grace of God and being humble in prayer. Because a praying man can't sin and a sinning man can't pray. If you're praying, you're seeking the Lord, you're in the word, you're taking care of the weeds in your own backyard, not always worrying about everyone else's mess but keeping your own backyard cleaned up. So just some thoughts, guys. I just came on here. I really didn't teach out of scripture. I just more hit the play button. Just wanted to give you a little of my own journey, how I got past as a young believer when someone fell, because it's disheartening, I'm sure, to a lot of people. They're scratching their head being like, I followed this dude like for 10, 20, 30 years, and now all this news comes out. It's just, hey, Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't ever place your full trust in the totality in any man or woman. Place your trust and seek Jesus. And we can glean and learn from people and really come under their tutelage. But we got to stop making idols out of people and rock stars in Christian dome. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, if you're new, it'd be an honor. Please subscribe. I'm also live Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern New York, prophesying, preaching, praying the word of the Lord. Blessings in Jesus' name.